please begin the service recording. Welcome to, wor to worship with Clinton Presbyterian Church. Thank you everyone for joining us either in person or online this morning. We are glad you have joined us for worship this morning. As we listen to the prayer, please take a deep breath, settle into your space, and look around at the beautiful faces of those who are gathered this morning. For even this mindful presence is a form of prayer. Next is the psalm, right? Did I flip the page right? No. I'm right. Oh, okay. It's you. <laughs> it's us. I just got to find the piece of paper. So we do the psalm, and we're going to sing the refrain. I, I will let you know. This one's, uh, this one's dark. <laughs> it's definitely a lament. And I don't think we've done it yet. give thanks to you, O Lord. With my whole heart, I will tell of all your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing to your name, O Most High. When my enemies are driven back, they will stumble and perish at your presence. For your Lord will sustain my right and my cause. You sit upon your throne Oh, righteous judge. Lord, you are my strength. Listen to help me. You have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. As for the enemy, they are finished in perpetual ruin. They are cities plowed under the memory of the perish. But you, Lord, are enthroned forever. You have set up your throne for judgment. Your rule, the Lord, in the wilderness. You judge the people with equity. Good morning. In this morning's lessons, we read the gracious words of invitation from our Savior. I'm reading this morning from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Our Lord, our rock, our redeemer. Amen. Amen. In addition to salvation, these words of invitation, in addition to our salvation, these words are of invitation are also an invitation to rest, to not struggle, to pause, to 
take a breath or perhaps to catch your breath. Some of us this morning have struggled to get here. I don't know what it looked like in your ride over or at home trying to get out the door, but maybe it'd be a nice opportunity to just close your eyes for a second and breathe. And after you've breathed, maybe you'll take another second and breathe a little bit more deeply. I love this about God. God always invites us into relationship with him. And as such, we are granted the awesome privilege of being able to communicate with God at any moment, on any given day or time. My sermon titled this morning is Prayer, Rest for a Weary Soul. Our scripture lesson is a much beloved scripture the world over. We see it on plaques, mugs, and t-shirts. And in those ways, many attest to the fact that they like the thought of the scripture, but whether or not they actually take it in in its totality with some of its complexity is two different things. The invitation. I don't know if you're like me, but there is nothing quite like receiving an invitation. We open the envelope. The pleasure of your company is requested. And man, we can't wait to read where we're being invited to and on whose behalf, a wedding, a baby shower, a graduation. After reading those words of invitation, it's exciting to see where we are heading towards. Well, we begin reading in this text, so actually before we start reading, Matthew, at the top of chapter 11, Jesus has just spent a bit of time teaching his 12 disciples, and then he begins to go to other cities proclaiming his message. And where we pick up Jesus' teaching from the invitation. These words of invitation for salvation for those who don't know Jesus in the pardoning of their sins, for those who still feel sin-tossed and sin-stained, Jesus' words come unto me. And for all who believe and wish to really enter into this relationship, this communication with Jesus, we are invited to trust that Jesus is who he claimed to be. And you can read it in Matthew 11 in his, in his speaking to the scribes and Pharisees and his healing. So these words are words of an invitation to, a, to rest, to a more restful life, to a life that is steeped in Christ's peace. And Jesus at that moment was speaking to a people who were in need of respite. And where I'm from, the ch uh, Presbyterian Church and the African American tradition, we have this thing we call call and response. The preacher says something and then the people say something back encouraging the preacher on, letting the preacher know he or she had gotten that message just right, or 
hit in the mark. And so I say and call back to myself, Jesus was speaking to a people who were in need of respite. Rest. Amen. Amen, preacher. <laughs> Jesus was speaking to a people who knew what it was like to be tired, and I know somebody out there knows what I'm talking about. He was speaking to people who knew what it was like dealing with a hard and oppressive rule. Because the people um, in Matthew's gospel, they were being untreated fairly, they were being unfairly taxed, severely mistreated by the government. And on top of that, the religious leaders were being oppressive and were often quoted as instructing people to carry the yoke of the Torah, the heavy burden of the Jewish law with all its commandments, over 600 of them, I add. And as it relates to prayer, Jesus invites us the first step of this prayerful life. I'm told you're doing a series on prayer. The first step of this prayerful life is taking a step and walking towards the one who bids you come. And then recognizing who or where you are. Because Jesus drilled down on the invitation and who in particular he was speaking to when he said, not just to come, but come to me all you who labor and all you who are heavy laden. Specifically, those who are burdened by the cares of life by sin, by political unrest or discord, by racial unrest, by war, by rumors of war, by sickness, disease, and death. I'm talking to tired people this morning. By unemployment or underemployment, we know the list can be endless. In that result of all of that is a burden of soul. And when these burdens begin to weigh on us, many of us think that the answer lies within us. Self-sufficiency. I've got this. I'm going to figure this out. I can handle this. But when we don't see a way out, when we don't feel that in us we have the answer, we become heavy laden. According to New Testament scholar Don Carson, labor implies the burdens that we take upon ourselves. But heavy laden implies the burdens that others put upon us. And so I would say to you this morning, whatever the cause of the burden, whether heavy or light, whether self-inflicted or other imposed, Jesus' invitation to prayer, to rest, to take his yoke upon you and learn from me was a wonderful, is a wonderful invitation. Learn what? Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. And I thought about what Jesus was inviting us to because he wasn't inviting us to a carefree life. He wasn't inviting us to a life without concern or worry. But he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. And I thought about some of Jesus' lessons to us. Lessons to trust God with all your heart, 
and not lean on your own understanding. You remember Jesus modeling that for us, don't you? When he was in the garden and he said, Father, if it's possible, please let this cup pass from me. This thing looks heavier than me. This thing is bigger than me. And Jesus in his humanity said, I don't want what's at the end of this. And then he taught us this with his next words. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Amen? He te Jesus taught us best this learning from him while teaching forgiveness when he was still in the midst of the fire, when he was still being spit on, when he was still being beaten, when he was still being ridiculed and mocked. Forgiveness in the fire. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Amen. Somebody, I know somebody is hearing me this morning. I think Jesus modeled for us to trust that God's ways are not our ways. And God's thoughts are not our thoughts. The scripture says as high as the heavens are above us, that's how far God's thoughts and God's ways are from us. I think Jesus was inviting us to learn to cast all our cares upon him. Inviting us to learn what we quote all the time, that all things work together for the good to those who love God and are called by God. So as disciples who want to live the, in this prayerful, who want to live this life of communication, this prayerfulness of both talking and listening to God, it is it is imperative that we learn to come as disciples willing to learn. Humility. Jesus was not so big that he couldn't humble himself to become one of us, to take on human flesh and come to this simple, world, we must learn to come as disciples willing to learn. What is my part to do? What is my part to help? What is my part to carry? What is my part to pray? And willing to be guided by Jesus' yoke that is easy and that is light. It is great when we receive blessings from God, when we receive those immediate answers that we want. Oh my, that is, that's the good stuff, the gravy, the cherry on top, right? It's great when we receive those blessings, but when we come, we must do so not just for the sake of receiving what we ask for, that is prayer, trusting that God knows what we don't and that God knows what's best. I've held on to this mantra since I was a young woman of faith. I don't know what the future holds. It's not mine. I don't attribute it to myself. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but thanks be to God. I know that I know 
that I know who holds tomorrow. You see, Jesus didn't offer to remove the burden from us. Instead, Jesus offered us to take on his yoke and to learn how to better balance our concerns and our worries. For that's what I'm told putting the yoke on a beast or an oxen is. You get assistance in carrying whatever heavy, heavy load you're trying to transport. And Jesus said, I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will receive help for your trouble. When we go to Jesus in prayer, and when we sit patiently in silence, Jesus speaks. God always speaks best in silence. In silence, the world, the noise of the world is crowded out and we find blessed rest for our souls. The prophet Jeremiah preached to the people and he reminded them to stand at the crossroads and look and ask for the ancient path where the good way lies and then walk in it and find rest for your souls. Friends, this yoke is easy and this burden is light because Jesus bears it with us. And when we walk in it with his yoke upon us, we do find rest. When we turn it over to Jesus, when we let Jesus bear it, and we don't feel the weight of its heaviness, if the burden, the problem, the situation is still weighing on you and feels heavy after you've turned it over, the indication is good that you have not truly cast off your burden and that you're not truly letting Jesus carry it with you. It also implies that you may not have fully taken on Jesus' yoke, which is light and easy. And while I say these words, I don't do so imagining that they are always easy to do. I'm a witness that sometimes they are downright difficult. But because they're difficult doesn't mean they're not doable. Amen, somebody. Amen. Following Jesus doesn't mean we're released, I'll say it again, from the responsibility. To take Christ's yoke means to obey the gospel, to submit to God's will. And when we do this, Oftentimes, we find answers to our own prayers. Nevertheless, even during those trying times, we can find rest and peace because we're yoked to him. We're never going through this life alone ever again. And we don't have to go through this life by our own strength. In contrast, the burdens that many of us carry are heavy. Life heaps heavy burdens. Religious expectations of that day were weighing the people down. And the trials then and now made people weary. Jesus' yoke is easy, not effortless. But with Jesus by our side, he lifts these burdens off our backs and places them on his. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30 is a lens into God's good plans for you, for you and me. And God's plans are not to keep us weighed down, but to give us blessed rest. There might be purpose in the pain, but God's 
purposes are never meant to be unbearable burdens. You don't have to go it alone. You are yoked to Jesus. And if you are not, the invitation is there for you to be. There might even be no purpose in the pain. Just the capriciousness of somebody being selfish or listening to an unholy voice and there is absolutely no sense or no purpose. And we know sin, sickness, and disease, no purpose. But in spite of this, God can work situations out for good when we trust him. There's a bumper sticker that I see from time to time, less so now, but it says Jesus is the answer, whatever the question. And when I was younger and less humble in my faith, I used to try to argue, debate, and negate that statement. But life and God has taught me some things. And in Matthew's gospel, Jesus clearly and succinctly offers himself as the omnipresent, all-inclusive, all-embracing, across-the-board solution to all that encumbers or weighs us down. Beloved of God, I hope you saw the good news in those three short verses. And I, pr I pray that you receive the gift of the passage and that the seeds will continue to germinate. Allow yourself to breathe and to breathe deeply, to fully receive the blessed assurance that even when all the world around seems to be given way, God can and will remain ever-present, offering rest for a weary soul. In closing, I offer you this short prayer by Henry Nowen. Dear God, speak silently, speak gently in my silence. When the loud, utter noises of my surroundings and the loud, inner noises of my fears keep pulling me away from you, Help me to trust that you are still there even when I am unable to hear you. Give me ears to listen to your small, soft voice saying always, come to me, you who are overburdened, and I will give you rest, for I am gentle and humble at heart. Let that living voice be my guide. Amen. Going to do this. <laughs> this is the moment for mission. Ministering to migrants on the brink of despair. The plight of thousands of migrants in her native El Salvador keeps Carmen Alina Diaz awake at night. Knowing their experiences, their stories, and administering to the migrant people, my life has been transformed, said Carmen. Their stories mark you, transform you, and sensitize you. They make you realize what a hard and difficult subject this is. Carmen helps coordinate the Reformed Church of El Salvador migrant ministry with deported and deplaced people addresses the terror and the pain of migrants in a country characterized by high rates of violence, political volatility, high unemployment, and escalating poverty. Entails looking not only at immediate solutions, but at other root causes that have led to so many in El Salvador to free, flee from their homeland. Joseph Russ, Presbyterian World Missions Coordinator for Migrant Issues, Advocacy, and Mission in the Northern Triangle of Central America, first came to El Salvador in 2016 as a young adult. Now, he works in close participation with Carmen and her colleagues and is dedicated to hearing, to offering leadership treat, 
training in nonviolence and investing in peacemaking. Through a shelter program for internally displaced people and returnees run in <coughs> collaboration with the International Red Cross Committee. They reduce people's exposure to violence and poverty and help them find stability amid difficult and even dangerous situations. And in addition, through community farming programs, they support sustain sustainable agriculture efforts for families so they have food as well as opportunity to generate income. Such efforts are made possible in part by gifts to the Peace and Global Witness Offering which we are collecting today. Give, give online or use one of the special envelopes in the back. Let us pray. Oh God, you are the bringer of peace. In Jesus, you showed us the way of peace. Bless our efforts to do the work Jesus showed us to do as we bring peace through our mission and ministry, our tithes and our offerings. Amen. Please remain standing if it's comfortable for you and join me as we have, as you have in other parts of the service. In one of the three parts of this prayer, one part is for me, the worship leader. One will be for anyone who is in the sanctuary in person this morning in italics, and one will be for those joining us remotely in both. Those joining us on Zoom, please unmute your mic so we can hear you. May the strength of God pilot us. May the power of God preserve us. The wisdom of God instruct us. May the way of God direct us. May the way of God defend us. May the host of God guard us against the snares of evil. Son of the world. Christ be with us. Christ, Christ be with us. us. Christ in us. Christ over us. Your, may your salvation, O oh Lord, be your grace us this day and forever. Amen. Take your burden to the Lord and leave them there, leave them there, leave them there. If you trust and never doubt, God will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave them there. Friends, let's leave this place committed to casting our cares upon God and remembering always that God cares for us. May the love of God, our Father, the joy of Jesus, our brother, and the peace of the Holy Spirit be with us this day and always.